Okay, uh, calling together the Richmond Parking Advisory Meeting of June 3rd, 2024. Um, we have here... Yes. Have the tab on the right at the top, I think, is it uh, from... And moreover, the top tab is Chrome. Is what? Oh, yeah. Just, uh, you know, I've already opened it in Chrome up the top tab. Oh, great, 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 great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just in attendance, we have Matt Buckley, Diane Mariano, John Cohn, Chuck Doroy, John Allen, all present. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we have Ian Bender. Uh, uh, anybody else visiting from? You see the thing? Those are participants. Uh, let's see. I believe Ian might be. The only one. Okay, so with that, I'm going to share screen uh, and we'll bring up the agenda. Um, so first, uh, we're going to start with uh, a welcome and public con comments. Um, uh, Ian, I think is you're the the uh, the only one here, not among the group. Uh, would you like to uh, ask or suggest or? Bring anything up? Sure. Um, I'm uh, here mostly because I'm interested in the update on the science for Dugway Road. And um, I was going to ask if you think that your agenda is pretty accurate to time, I can come back um, later in the meeting. Um, we can cover Dugway Road right now if you want. We, yeah, yeah, we might. Well, oh, yeah, sure. if, that's, if, it's not a, if it's not an inconvenience for you guys, that would be great. Before we do that, could we... Uh, uh, we're, we're a bit ahead of time. No, we're right on time. Any additions or deletions to the agenda that we want to do other than that change for uh, the sign discussion? That's, that's not a 62 live anyway, so we'll just move that up. Okay, to... and then I I propose that we we uh, hit the uh, Deadway Road signage uh, before the reappointments. Is that all right? Oh, sure. All right. Um, and I guess when we get to East Cock, and I'll, I'll have some thoughts on the no parking sign itself that's near the bridge. Yeah. And uh, should that be, we should add that. So we're going to move item four. Move so item I'm moving four. Move item four to above the discussion topics. We can cover that quickly now. And then you want to add a similar discussion on this the, the no, no parking sign on East Cochran Road is perhaps is different than the informational sign. Is that number okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. We so, have that uh, number. Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we're, how do we put them into the agenda? Or, or maybe. maybe. So I think we, we just leave, we'll just discuss well, it in three. We'll just make sure that we, we cover it. Oh, okay, sure. We have it at number three, so we're good. Okay, okay. So, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So, Ian, I've got a couple things for you on the signage. Um, <laughs> you're gonna love the answer, but the signs are in. What we've done is we've added signs on both ends that'll be perpendicular to the flow of traffic. We've added four new signs in between and all the signs in between will now say, no parking this side of the road toll so. So instead of having some that say travel portion of the road and some that say no parking, they're all gonna have the same message on them. All the signs are in, we were gonna do it Last Thursday, I was going to meet with Pete and the guys, and we're going to do the signs, except for the speed bumps took longer than they thought they should take. So it, yeah. it is on the agenda for this coming week that we get those signs up. Okay, that's great. That's pretty much my, that was all I have, was wondering about the timing. Uh, so that's good news. No, I appreciate that. And it, it, sure. we're about a month behind what we hope to do, but I think we'll be before we get the real heat waves. Yeah, yep. All right. Thanks a lot for taking care of that. Thank you, Ian. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Anything else for topic four since we've moved it up? Tell me you covered it. Uh, no, I think that's where we're at. So, so by, by next week, the sign should be up. Um, as I say, we had a day last week, but the uh, the speed bumps took longer than I thought. So, yeah. um, just a side note, we were kind of warned about keeping the agenda up on the screen. What didn't, some, didn't somebody send you an email? On that? Yeah, um, they made it hard to, yeah. to see us. Yeah, or, um, the person who does the and then uh, Ruth Miller. Ruth Miller. Should I comment about that? Do you want a paper copy? I, I give you my paper copy. Well, 
Oh, so they would rather see us? I think so. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Easily and done. Just go back and forth. How about yeah. That? yeah. It's a procedural thing. Yeah, I can understand that. It could be a... All right. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Uh, so I'd say that that, uh, if, and we haven't gotten any comment. We won't get any comment on the science. Yeah. So. All right, so I think that puts us back to uh, uh, three appointments. Three appointments. Oh, it's wow. at six ten. We're right on time, or just a bit early. Um, okay, Ian has left. So John and I were reappointed. Oh, nice. So you are that covers it. And, and there's a. I filled out a form that's sitting in a file there. I don't know, Chuck, whether you got to do that yet yeah. or not. The code of ethics. Yeah. Do you have to sign that when you read to... at your leisure or say or something as soon as possible? I don't imagine. Okay. <laughs> uh what else is in this topic? So you two are reappointed. And what who else's terms are I think oh. we're all good. We're, we're all good until 2025. Yeah. Right. Uh it is a it would be an agenda point. Does anybody feel so moved to be the leader of the pack? Does anybody want the? How do you, do you want this democracy to stay the way it is, where we kind of swap things around, or would we like? What do they call chair, vice chair, secretary? Does anybody want any of that? Do you feel any need for that? Does anybody feel a need to be a, a desire that, to have a chairperson? It does give a cohesiveness and a. Point of contact, a vision perhaps, a direction. Um, Y'all happy the way it is? I don't have the need to be the chair, nor do I particularly see a need to have a chair. We seem to get along well and we seem to hand out the duties. I would, say, I would um, say it works. I don't really have a strong opinion either way. I certainly don't want to be it, but if someone wanted to step forward, I'd be fine. And it, if it stays the same way, it also will be fine. I'm, I'm fine with the way it is. If someone wanted to be in the chair, I'd be okay with that, but I'm not volunteering. <laughs> and nor am I. There's a theme here. There's a theme. All right. All um, right. We'll, we'll just say it's a shifting chair. Congratulations, <laughs> all five chair people. <laughs> I would say it's a great, it's a great, it's great that we actually can make that work. It's, you know, that can be a, a recipe for disorder. It also, but yeah, on the positive side, it can be a uh, more of a um, moment, you know, gathering people, talking about it, leaving people. There's positives for that also, and I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to rule out that in the future we'll need that. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, I think certainly at the start, you know, Karen, that was very and mm -hmm. very helpful. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm going to move to old topic one. Uh, discussion topics permitting for new trans parking area at Johnny Brook, no, uh, 11 permit, um, the ID4 5043 permit parking permit update. Say that really fast permit parking per permit, perhaps update, and then uh, discussion on the long term improvements to the area. I have a question on the minutes. It said the spaces cannot be opened until at least August. Did I miss that? I, I spoke of, yeah. I saw that also. Is that true? Yeah. Right. Wow. It, was that discussed or is that new? I, I that don't was the state. That was briefly discussed last wow, meeting. I totally wow. missed that. Yeah, Until I, I looked at the minutes, I go, is that? I was going to bring up the yeah. minutes. But thank you. <laughs> so can we talk about that again? <laughs> that part so where are we at? Yes. Is that the... The history, of course, is we had two years in there that were a trial basis. We didn't particularly know they were a trial basis. And then last year, the state said, if we're going to continue this, we need to make it permanent. So, okay. So, the state has written up a contract and sent it to Josh. The contract includes a fair amount of responsibility of the town to correct damage to the swale and parking and all these kind of things. And, and Josh wasn't 100% comfortable with it. So he sent it back for a rewrite. I just talked to him two minutes ago. And it's come back and forth through time on a rewrite. And now even when it is passed, even when they, he signed the contract, 
it'll need to be voted on by the select board because the town is taking on liability. Mm -hmm. So that's something we thought was going to be relatively quick. Seems to be moving along. Are we take when you say taking on liability, not just is it liability for the cars that park there or the swale responsibility or both? I think it's more the responsibility for the damage to the state property. Which would be the thing. And, and, and part of me thinks this is great because it, it, it would handshake into the idea that we want to put some better barricades around things like the swale. So I think I think when the town agrees to do this, they'll be very receptive of the plan that we're going to put forward to somehow make this protect the swale more than it is. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be a good thing. Um, just speaking with Josh, he, he said the last rewrite came through and he had to read it a couple of times to see what they changed. It wasn't like he was looking for this change and he got this change and wasn't quite ready to sign on it yet. Okay. And one of the issues is that when this, I should have brought a copy with me, every time this thing needs to get signed, there's like eight people that have to sign it before it goes to Josh. And I think we're now into that Memorial Day holiday season. So person five is not there, so it waits a week. So do I understand that it could still be August? I mean, how much is that particular piece used? Is, is that a hot spot in summer? I think so, very much so. Yes, so, right. absolutely. So the park and ride would be an alternative, but that's pretty busy and wouldn't be most people's first choice. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the mountain biking community, American through the who we've been talking to have been very patient about the whole thing. I think they see there's a bigger prize down the road. Okay. But great. I think they're also were expecting that. I expected it also, but like, I would think a month, like, just because of bureaucracy. Wow. This is very new ground for the state. This yeah. is, they made this very clear that this is not, this is not typical for that. So. Do you define the swale as the section um, that is kept free for like flooding or water? Is that what they- There is a drainage in there. And it, it, by the telephone pole, and it, if you're standing at a bridge looking at it and you picture this as being a P, the swale is the hump of the P, and then they also would like to have the parking come all short of where the guardrail is by 10 or 15 feet. Okay. So I think that's all part of the stormwater runoff plan. Okay. And that's where a lot of fingers get into, I think, when you start talking about stormwater. Okay. I don't think we're far away, but I didn't think we were far away a month ago. Yeah. Um, sounds like, well, are they going to do another, do you envision another site list? Is it really, or, or is the plans pretty solid? I think, I think it's, I think they're really close. Okay, great. I, I think, great. I think the wording that we're looking for in there, the town is looking for, I believe, is damage caused by parking as opposed to damage. So I think the way it first came through, in my mind, it looked like a car went off the corner on the bend and went down the swale, dug it up. Yes. The town would have been on the hook. And it's in. I'm not surprised that Josh said, yes. I don't know about that. Yes. So I think that's kind of the attitude he went back with and said, let's let's define responsibility, let's define the damage. If it's damaged by parking cars, we can talk about this, but we're not going to be wholly liable for everything that's on there. Well, it also it sounds uh, also how we we have to pay attention to the seasonal use. So if we get July, we get a huge flooding, uh, we may hit a road across it, for example. We have just said, uh, right? Are you uh, in communication? I'm so sorry, I forgot the gentleman's name who lives on who has been following this topic. Sure. Is it, is it him? America is one of the people I've been chatting with. There, there, there is another one. I'm sorry, but you it's such my mind Yeah. Um, but but I do plan on bumping them all note tonight and saying great. Here we are. And they'll they'll pass that on to the community. They've been they've been good about it. They really have. You know? So not that I need to find necessarily more parking, but have you noticed? Um you're going from Richmond, you go across the bridge. Um you go past the road, but if you look at the telephone pole on the right, there are two or three parking places. Before the cat 
Oh, yes. Before yes. the before so, capitalism? No, after that, before COVID. Perpendicular to yes. John. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No beaver parks there. There you go. I don't know if anyone noticed it, but I, there's. Because when, when that is opened up, you're right. Like, there's a half a dozen between the telephone pole yeah. and, the, and our recreational parking sign. And then there's the entrance to the corral. Who owns? I don't know if it's uh, is Conan's. B trans. No, no, I'm talking about oh. the, the one near the telephone pole. It's a, it's a, next to Conan's field. Oh. It's Conan. It's right on route two. Does anybody else notice this? In that case, I'm not picturing what you're doing. The next time you go next time you go on route two to cross from the uh, right before Conan's field on the right hand side, there's a telephone pole and there's at least three other parking places, uh, spaces there that. Um, I personally would want to park there because it's not too, but if you're a biker, um, next time you guys go down there, it, it, I don't know if it's Richmond Land or Williston. Is, is Conan's? Well, Conan's in Richmond. So, so it would be Richmond. Is it? Is it where is it here? Look, look right there. The, yeah. Oh, yes. So where's the road? Where's our, where's the, where's route two? Uh, route two is here. Okay. And there's the road, uh, so giant the road. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like if you came out of Johnny Brook and took a left, it'd be right on the right hand side. Okay, right here. Yeah. And is that? Oh, I'm sorry. You come out of if you if you came if you came out of Johnny Brook and took a left, it would be on the right hand side. Right. So maybe right here. Is there any way to expand that? Can you? Is there? It's a little. Right here. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. Is that an entrance to the farm field? No, or, not no? at all. Well, uh -huh. uh, good question, John. Uh, 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 a good question. It didn't look like it was. Uh -huh. Is that, do you think that's Conan's land? And the, the Richmond line is beyond beyond that, right? Yes, it's farther down. Well, Anyways, I mean, um, independent. Would that I've, been, be something? I've been looking at it for the last couple of months going, like, is anyone parking there? It would be wise to ask. Right, so, give me an idea what you're talking about. So, we've come across the river. Yes, here's the interstate. So here's here's there's Johnny, the fork. Here's Johnny Brook right here. Yeah, Johnny Brook's that section you, there. You you come off of, you come off here, you take a left, and there's a telephone pole. Yeah, it's right next to the telephone pole. So that would be Conan Flame. Well, if it's in the right of way, I'm gonna. It's probably the telephone poles right away. Yeah. Yeah, right away. Aren't necessarily right here. Yeah, yeah, beyond that. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, okay. And just take a look. Um, oh, yeah, this thing, yeah, it's like it. Um, not that I, I was going looking for more, but I was thinking I started noticing. I, it. I, actually, I know where you the, the devil park the, the the mower there when she's mowing. It's this one little flat spot there that that. Kind of drops off on all sides. Exactly. Kind of... Like that. Yes. Oh, you said that guardrail. Yeah. Oh. And this is. Uh... It's right next to the telephone pole. It's right sure. there. Yes, you got it, John. It yeah, it could have been placed there, you know, when they were doing road oh, work. Even. Could be. I don't know. And it's not the road right away, is it? Or I guess you can you get fully it, you can get fully off the road with a car, so it's a safe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But is this is this likely be trans? Is it self? I have the, no the idea. Route two. I've just been watching it. No one's parked there. So independent of that being stopped at, should that be something that we pursue as a group? I was curious about it. Yeah, let's find out. Looks to be on my it little square. It looks to be Collins land. But Are you looking at? On uh, basement, yeah. Um, what's the history of of the need for overflow from the spaces that would be going in at, at Johnny Brooks Road across the area? Oh, you guys know no, better than no, I no need when there's parking there. They're 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 happy. I was just wondering if if it could be a possibility for people to park okay. there while um. Until so that, yeah. Until, yeah. But yeah. Uh, what about? For different recreation, for fishing or anything, is it more convenient? I I wonder if you know John said, is it is it their access in and out of tractor? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe some inquiry yeah. to find out. Oh, it's all Conan's land, or it was yeah. leased by I mean, really, trans or... That's exactly the spot. It's it's right next to that telephone pole. 
It looks more official than. Yeah, yeah that guardrail. Like, I'm really curious. But you say on base map. Uh, well, it's on its property. It's on its property. That's what well, shows up on. I, I imagine it is. What's funny is that that's a, that, that's a an official guardrail. Yeah, and they it, potentially could have been there for. During construction. There's also a fair amount of parking along Johnny Road, too. And I think the cyclists are I mean, aware of the under the bridge, those kind of things. You know, we yeah. haven't had that 50 cyclist day yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody, anybody think we should pursue this? I think maybe as a stopgap, if we really don't think we've got the sort of depth of all this. I mean, if, if you're going to say sure, and we can say temporary parking over here, is that worth doing? Or it's not likely to be that easy? Well, that's, the, that's why I was curious about what's, what's the history here of me. Um, oh, I'm I'm only suggesting. Yeah. That oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. But but do we? I I should put, I should have put the question better. Do we even need it as a stop? Yeah. No, maybe we don't. No. But that's what I meant. No, oh. Maybe we don't. And um, I, I it's not that. I mean, this picture actually shows more possibility than what exists there now. Um, it does does have that little guardrail, but it doesn't look quite as open and wide as it is today. So. When I looked at it, I said, oh, that took for three or four cars. Well, I drive to there every day to work. So yeah, take over. a look tomorrow morning and just see. Yeah. All right. Let's, we'll just All right. put that off. That is, uh, on that topic. is there a specific we want to decide on that before we approach the comments? The comments? I don't know. That, um, I'm, I'm hearing for everybody not a need at this moment. Okay. Sounds good. Am I right? Unless there's a need, because I'm I'm always maybe it's just the history living in the town for so long. Um, I wouldn't want to make the Conant family nervous about approaching. Them. Hey, by the way, and we are talking about this in the public meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we should. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say if there's no need. Yeah, I agree. All right. All right. Okay. So uh, that's all we have on what was the former uh, topic one. So topic two, which uh, was to have begun at 6.30, we're on track, 6.5. Uh, zoning changes so, to um, the- I don't so, need to interrupt, but discussion sure. on long-term improvements to the area. Do you want to talk oh, about Oh yeah, let's talk about that. Or another time? Uh, unless somebody else thoughts, my thought was that, my only thought was that potentially we could help Josh's argument by putting the fence in some kind of a rip, more industrial railing type system in there, ropes or whatever, then, the market thing we have there. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So that's all I was thinking. All right. I'm happy to help with that. And the town would pay for that. Thank you very much. I think it'd, it'd be in their best interest to pay for it now. Mm -hmm. So I think we'd have a put up a leg up on the argument. Okay. Thank all you. Right. I'm sorry to interrupt, John. No, no, that's good. Uh, ready to move to, to old topic two. Mm -hmm. um, zoning changes to facilitate recreational park. What is um, I, I was the one that requested it be on the agenda. Should I sure. go into it? Absolutely. All right. So at the May 13th meeting of the select board where um, they were talking about volunteers green, topic came up of perhaps making zoning changes to facilitate recreation at volunteers green. And I thought, well, perhaps since zoning changes are hard to do, perhaps we could just give it a little thought to if there was any zoning changes to facilitate recreational parking. And so I delved into this little a little bit and do have an, an area for us to think about. Um, and then this ties into Diane and I, a meeting with Tyler back in March that Chuck had been involved and Pete Goslin. We had proposals to add Phil to West White, a hill across from the dam for shoulder parking adjacent to the Lowe's property and possibly um, down near the Bombardier Meadow. Um, and, and so I looked at the zoning rules that were related to that. And 
the, any changes. It seemed at the time that Diane and I met in Filer that uh, putting that shoulder parking looked fairly challenging at the Bombardier Meadow. And so I wasn't going to focus on that tonight, but I did look at the zoning related to the shoulder parking at West White Hill. And then I sent an email to Tyler, our zoning administrator, and then talked with him on the phone last Friday. And so what he had said when Diane and I met with him, that he thought, he suggested that that shoulder parking that Pete Coslin had put together a proposal was doable, but it was a conditional use for parking. And so we would need to go to the development board of review and get their approval. And so I was, and when I talked to Josh, he had suggested, well, maybe the town engineer could help you with that. But I started to look at what was required and what's required among other things is a site plan to get a conditional use for parking. And if you could bring up uh, the, one of those tabs in Chrome. Um, yeah. Chrome. So one of the ones on the top of me, are you in Chrome? Yeah. And it was a so it Richmond. It. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's hard to get to. One of the, Does it uh, yes. So you need a site plan to get conditional approval and for the parking. And the site plan requires item five. It says parking must be located to the rear of buildings or at the side, well screened from view. And so Tyler thought that when the parking went in on Cochran Road uh, near the old canoe access, that the development order of review overlooked the fact that there's no building. But that does seem language seem problematic to me that it seems to want the parking to go near a building in the AR agricultural residential zone. But even if they overlooked that, Tyler thought they might not overlook that the parking not be well screened. And hence, when my conversation on Friday, and he offered to come, that he could come meet with us if he requested, that effectively, there's no shoulder parking allowed uh, in the agricultural residential zone of Richmond. Um, I guess it's not his call, it's the development board of review. So my question um, here tonight, is this something, and I don't know what the right procedural ground that the planning commission, the select board uh, could give some thought as to whether this language is blocking any future shoulder parking in the town of Richmond in the AR zone and perhaps elsewhere. And is that a good thing? And the fact that it needs a building is confusing. Is, is this, can I just ask a question? Is this sort of like a clarification where some of the old wording wasn't complete and we're suggesting a, um, like for example, we had suggested including the name of another town property and we changed some language about camping that was Oh, we want to talk about the park ordinances. The park or ordinances. Yeah. Is, this, is this akin to it making is. a correction in the ordinances where, as I agree with you, that this is unclear if there's it, no building? It's actually very clear because the town is most interested and has only had experiences with parking associated with the residential or, or commercial usage. Um, and what I understand what our meeting that we have with Tyler, he basically said there is no language that says where we want to do anything for recreational parking if there wasn't a park or a structure. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just put it out in the field. Or, like, I mean, not in the field, along the field or, or along. Yeah, it, it would have to be... I don't know if the... Development Review Board will veto it based on that language, yeah. or it's going to them to appeal it and saying, "We know this language exists. This is, you know, because of this landowner and because of uh, town use, the desire for the town the extra mm. parking. We feel like it's in keeping with the character of the pond. Could we bring that forward? I think." 
I think that's what the, the, the review board's all about is allowing permission on things that don't use variances. Thank you for the word. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know enough about it. My my sense is that some of the language in the 127 pages has been cut and pasted from other towns and other language has been carefully vetted and, and fit into Richmond's needs. And perhaps this hasn't been carefully thought about. Tyler seemed to suggest that this was problematic. And I guess I don't know enough to say whether that's true. He also said, there's a possibility always that the development board of review would say, okay, we'll let this go and someone would appeal it. Because it doesn't fit the, yeah, 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 you could appeal yeah. it on that. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank I, you for the sleep words. Yeah. We're reading all that. <laughs> and the clarification of this. Well, could we ask Josh or the select, somebody as to if if the right group of people can see if this language is uh, needs modification or are we proposing a modification? Is that what um, well, Tyler suggested he thought that the planning commission should rewrite the parking rules. I, I, oh. I, I don't. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my my understanding of this was I thought that the folks that do volunteers green and the playground and all that were making this argument so, so so that we could have parking down there that didn't get washed away and we could have a playground down there that didn't get washed away because Pete has pretty much said I'm not fixing this anymore. Um, I know that in Tyler's previous thing, he, he cites section 6.8.9 or something that regarding the floodplain. Um, so is that is that not true? There's already somebody trying to try in this battle for the for the volunteer green. So there was something that came up in the meeting where the select board asked the planning commission to look into zoning rules, is my recollection. Um and I don't know where that where that's gone. Um, that's my recollection. Okay. And, and as to what the rule was, I don't recall. So, so this may be in the category of a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So, whose property could be affected? Would it be some landowner that owns adjacent, but maybe doesn't have a house nearby? Mm -hmm. um, and then that gets us into all sorts of issues that um, it, it's not the landowner coming forward to ask for a conditional use. Would it be the board, the, the, the committee coming forward? And, and what if the landowner is um, not happy about the idea? So I, I, I think we need to be thinking about um, first identifying where there is a need. So, and then maybe the first step would be identifying the property owner to see if there's going to be opposition. So, so the way I was looking at it is we were potentially interested in shoulder parking on West White Hill Road, adjacent to the Lowe's property, um, in conjunction with this other parking lot being built across the street by the land yeah. trust that that maybe wasn't sufficient. Pete Gosson put together a proposal and it would cost so much until, and where it had been was, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, go get the um, <clears throat> conditional approval from the DRB and you're good to go. But to, if the select board wanted to pay for doing that and then approved of it. And so Tyler said last Friday to me, he didn't know that the DRB would approve it because it, there wouldn't be a line of trees separating yeah. Cars and and, and when you say adjacent to the low property, so whose property is it? It's it is it's the, on the low property. Oh, okay, so, right away, but okay. there's no all the low is all for it. Okay. Yeah. Then it would it would cross the line okay. into that, 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 that essentially okay. answers okay. that question. That's so, funny because I, I thought that was the easy one. Yeah, and is Tyler right? I don't know if he's right, but that's that's. What well, I mean, I'm just looking back yeah. to his original findings on this, and that one seemed to be the one that we could get some traction on. Thought so, we wouldn't be helped by this four well screened from view. 
Um, Would you need a DRB uh, a variance on that since that's worded that way? Right. So the 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 uh, if it's, there's no building involved or well screened from view, um, you know that I don't think that's that's not the case at, at the West Whitehill thing, and I don't think anybody would complain if it weren't. Do we still have to get a variance because of the language here? Well, can we overlook it just like everybody else has been overlooking it, or do we need to go through that process? Well, the the, the language is is not optional. The language is affirmative. Exactly. So so and and this is way back in the old old days. But when I chaired the zoning board, we would have interpreted this as it's affirmative language and it must be. I mean, that was so cool. so if this was affirmative, and let's say for the West Bank Bill thing, we could request a variance to get us out of that. Is that correct? Yeah, in theory. Yes. And I think that's Good. probably what Tyler was saying. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Exactly. And 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 Good. so he's probably knows this. Yeah. Yes. Right. Just keep in mind that variances are not they're not easy things to get. Gotcha. Yeah. So what we did did I hear David Sunshine say he granted four of them and the whole time he didn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, yeah. I, I, I don't. It, it, it's true. It's, yeah, it, yeah. It's because when you read the the, the variance language of the statute or the, the ordinance carefully, it there's not a lot of wiggle room. So anyway, yeah. I'm not saying don't do it. I think we need to look at it in more detail. Yeah, this is. Uh, thank you for. Both of you, especially the insight that you have from the past. Um, so this is we. I think it, we were just going to wait to see what happened this year, anyways. Um, however, I'm also guessing this is not easy to get done if we wanted to go this route, um, or are we on the topic that we want? To recommend an ordinance change? Oh, well, I wasn't. I was thinking that the planning commission would be the one that would come up yeah. with language. Okay. Yeah. No, are we thinking this only applies to Gillette Spawn, West White Hill? Or do we also think there's changes to the floodplain regulations that would affect East Cochran Road? Um, what I was told by Tyler on Friday was that. And, and he, this may have been what he was saying back in March that there's a roadside parking involved fill and fill is okay for maintenance. So the fill that was put in, that was okay because that was maintenance. But fill where he saw it as being for parking, he wouldn't allow. So one, one could ask for changes that would allow shoulder parking near the Bombardier Meadow, yes. So as a just practical question, is does batching them together, if you're going to the DRB to ask for both those together, does that make it easier or no, I would personally I would do them separately. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is there any other to do them the same? I do believe though that, that another committee is, is trying to get that that flood zone for parking changed. <clears throat> and that, is that the that, planning commission? So that may be for me for us later to talk about going in. So if the floodplain on the state level, and I thought it was on the town level too, it's net gain that you can't have. So if you're going to put 11 loads of fill there and you're going to take 11 loads of fill out of somewhere else, mm -hmm. all rockers, then that meets the net gain. I think I think there's always a problem with, with the fill and the fact that you know the 100,000 Square feet of material you put here shows up in somebody else's yard and floods. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's not fair. So I think that's the, I think the flood the flood fill things are really there to protect everybody. Um, but I do think some, I do think they're making an argument they're all here green and then we may we may revisit this later. But I don't know there's any traction to get onto it now except for Gillette's pond, of course. Yeah. Well. I guess what I would think of doing is talking to Josh or um, Keith or Virginia or someone who was the next and just say, this language is confusing and is potentially would block 
shoulder parking, is this something that you could consider? I do. Maybe they would say, no, shoulder parking is fine. This doesn't mean that. But I, I uh, based on my conversation with Tyler, I just didn't go, no. What do we want to do with this? It seems like eventually, one way or the other, we're going to have to go through the DRB. And it would, it would seem like it might be worth our time to, to get on their agenda and just ask some general questions and, and just to see whether it's worth the energy. How do they do that? Is there like a legal I proceeding? Yeah, I don't know if you could on them just have a conversation. No, you could talk to somebody. Like, An informal? Yeah. 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 Or invite a member as a guest to our meeting. Uh, I guess I'm in favor uh, in one sense, I'm in favor of watching it for a year. I think it would whenever we make changes, we should watch it. On the other hand, I also think, well, not on the other hand, but I also think that there's a public good there, particularly on the play hill, that we should, you know, should encourage that somehow, you know, at the right time, if it's not too onerous on us or anybody else, which sounds like it, you know, it, it or I don't know how anybody else is doing, but it, you know, to make that work, it's great. Would you like Tyler to come to me and tell us if, if I accurately represented his words or whether he had further socks? I, uh, I think you nailed it. I'm yeah, I, I, I'm actually curious, uh, who's the chair of the DRV? Is it David Sunshine or still? I'm not sure. Is it, I was wondering maybe Virginia would be a good person. To yeah, but, but uh, maybe somebody could attend electronically so that it's yeah. easy for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, if they said this isn't a problem, then it's not a problem. It just seems like we have all the parties want this. The landowner wants this. The neighborhood wants this. We want this. We don't see this being a giant invasive. Mm -hmm. I would have to say, not all parties. Pete is not a fan of this. Pete, Pete. For multiple reasons. I, and so I want to be fair. One to ten, I'd give, him, I'd give him a six that he's against it. You know, he said, if this is the best we can do, then I'll make it through the select board that he wants to cross the road. He, he would like a couple of seasons to okay. pass before. He's a, he's a guy I was you know, on the road the other day. He says, I'd like a couple of years, a couple of seasons, a couple of winters to see how this plays out with already that's up there. So, so what do we think? Do we put this on the back burner? Uh, I'd like to have somebody else in town weigh in on whether this is a problem and right. whether some thought should be, even if it would take a, a year, year it something, might take a while. but to just to have them know about it. And then they could say, no, we're not interested or yeah, well, well we've got all this other stuff we're looking at. Well, we'll get to this in six months. I, but. That might be you want, you that want. might be the uh, um in who um I mean I, I don't know should I start with Josh um and then have him direct me that's a great idea should that's a great idea I don't have my distance classes what section of the ordinance is that is that five point five point three conditions for approval for site plan review and then somewhere else it tells you when you need a site plan. And the sub paragraph down there is what that we're specifically looking at. What was the one? Yeah. Uh, five. Oh, A5. A5. A yeah. Okay. I know that Josh would be very happy to come to watch all of this. Okay. He's expressed that before. Yeah, I think he's a little out of place. I'm saying that Josh might be a great person just to, so we can all say, hey, Josh, we just understand this a little bit better. Um, I could also send an email to David. Just asking, just getting his uh -huh. thoughts about um the, the yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Sure. So what is the actual do you have a an actual follow-up from the over what's the next? Well, I, I will follow up by emailing David. And, and should I ask Josh? Yeah, yeah, have a follow up. We'll ask Josh to the next meeting. 
And we can put it at whatever time is easiest right. for him. And if we I mean, on the agenda, if we want to have him, are there other topics that we want to queue up? Josh. For Josh, I mean, he's been in trouble. Depending where Johnny Brook is at the time, you know. Well, yeah. I'm thinking that we could. Yeah, what well, we have. He, yeah, he shows up. Yeah. We should plan out our so. time. Josh. I'm, a little, I'm a little concerned about pounding on him a little too much right now with mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff, but let's hope that the parking thing wraps up in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. And then. And speaking of time, how are we doing? We five are five minutes, minutes over, uh -huh. uh, but we're going to pick it back up because of topic four. So can we move on? Because uh, so um, when we figure out what our next meeting is, we could just ask. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll invite him to come and explain that that's one of the topics we want to talk to him about. Is everyone good at that? And then yeah, we'll have to make sure we don't yeah. we don't schedule slightly more time or or yeah. a lot of time. And then we at least give some thought among ourselves of anything else that we want to run. All right. Thank you. Okay, thanks for doing it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, tough, it's a tough understanding topic. I agree. Exactly we don't right. have. All right. Uh, so, full topic three. Uh, we're at 640. I'm sorry, 650. 650. Yeah. Um, East Cochran Road parking options, repositioning of informational signs within the no parking area. And it says frost line definition as it applies to parking regulations. I think that it should read fog line definitions because it appears in the line that it applies to parking regulations. So I'll start with the fog lines. Um, I reached out to Chief Cambridge by email and called him and never got a, never got a reply to it. So my question was going to be. Do the fog line now represent the travel portion of the road? Or up till now, we had assumed that the tires on pavement will travel portion of the road. And how much parking is that definition? I would just say anecdotally, you know, we watch it and we've seen people parking, again, it hasn't been a full on hot day, but we see people parking there and it does seem like it makes it easier. It certainly makes it clearer where the line is. But I don't know legally. That's my question. That means. No, legally. Um, People I've, seem to yeah. visually take that. I've as, seen uh, yeah. uh, four cars parked there very comfortably in tires inside the fog line area. I've seen uh, two takeouts of canoes putting on all the spread. Yeah. yeah. So if the question is if that doesn't violate the, the travel portion. It, I think it makes it clearer what's okay, and it also makes it a little less dodgy to park there. But I think it certainly is a incline. It opens up more parking. Yes. It, people are now not finding yes. all four wheels into the dirt. They just yes. need to get too on too close. But it really makes us, I mean, from a safety standpoint, even walking there, it feels better because you know, I, mean, I, I think that the bog line is the travel portion. Yeah, and the town clear, made it clear it's not a, it's not a bike lane, it's not a pedestrian lane. It's they're strictly there to, to have you focus and slow traffic down. Mm -hmm. So it's also good for. Uh, so if I hear back yeah, yeah. more more from Chief Cambridge on that, okay. I will let it, let everyone know. So that's a key. I think that's a key thing to find out in terms of you know yeah. how available that parking is and how safe it is. Because I, I think well, it, those are two. Different questions, right? I mean, just because you get your tires off is you know, safe. That's true. Yeah, but my my yeah. question directly was: Legal. Do Legal. the fog line now clearly indicate the travel portion of the road? Or in the past, vehicles that had tires on pavement were considered on the travel right. portion. I, of the road. I agree with you. It doesn't mean just because, because you might be parked but, dangerously, like in the intersection or something like that. I really want from a ticketing point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, these folks going to get towed or ticketed when they're outside the white line, which common sense, you think it's okay. But so I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Right. So, and uh, so going back, uh, we, so, so the to do there is to talk to Chief Cambridge and get, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I might bump up to the state police and just ask them a general question on that and just try to find somebody, somebody else who has some input on it. So uh, the repositioning of informational signs to within the no parking area. You were going to go look at that. Uh, so I think we're just talking about that one 
now bend the yellow sign. So I was there yesterday, and what I I see there, there are two signs. There's a no parking sign, which may be where Pete put it in relation to the curb cut, if we want to call it that, for the defunct uh, meadow parking. And then the, is it like a share the road kind of sign? It doesn't say share the road, which is even closer to the bridge. Mm -hmm. So when I read the zoning rules, um, it reference Duxbury Road is where it starts, but then there's also a separate rule that says 25 feet from an intersection. The no parking sign, as I pasted yesterday, is 100 feet, which maybe makes sense if people are parking in the meadow, but if no one is parking in the meadow, there's 75 feet that isn't referenced by the zoning, and excuse me, the, um, is it the highway uh, ordinance? Um, and so it, it crossed my mind and I didn't have a clear answer. Not only might that uh, informational sign be moved closer to Duxbury, or one, one way or the other, but should the no parking sign be moved? And, and one could make an argument, well, you're going to open it up next year, so we can just leave it where it is. But um, we don't know they're going to open it next year. And what about this year? And I, that, that's was thoughts that cross my mind. And right now there is a, there's a sign that says drop off area that was placed by the land trust that maybe Bill will see. Yeah. And that's the uh, that's on the no parking side of the parking. So side, right? so the the dilemma is I'll say again what you just said. Yeah. So we, for clarity that um he put the no parking sign begin, no parking begins within I'll call it the apron area of the um land trust access point yeah. into the meadow. So that if that were if that at the time it was being used, if that was to be used, nobody would park. You could have vision, yeah, visibility in and out of there. Yes. And you're right. Will it ever be used again? It's, you know, I'm not sure the land trust is going to do. And the fact that it's not being used right now, and people are parking there, people do park. Uh -huh. there, will one of the kinds or PD folks go look up at that sign and go, they're illegally parked because they're no parking. They, they would have a good argument if they. they very good argument. Um, they would have a very good argument for giving them a ticket. Correct. Oh, yeah. In, in a place that looks safe. Oh, but they could have, as far as I know, you are allowed to park within 25 feet of Jacksonville Road. If the park, the fact that the, he put the sign there doesn't make it. Uh, against the rules of park there. Right. All all intersections have that apron of 25 feet yeah. can't park it. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And but but it's it's further ahead of that. There's an extra 75 feet because yeah. of the defunct yes. entrance to the yeah. meta. And again, does that make you know it's discretion always with when somebody gives somebody a ticket, would uh Heidsburg PD Officer gave a ticket because they're going to see the sign. And even though they both wheels were off and they're in that little bump out, yeah, no one's gotten a ticket there. Yet. Yeah, um, discretion again. Um, and our and the other option is we ask that sign to be moved for this year and then move back if yeah, it, or halfway through, um, for two posts and keep moving the sign back and forth. And, a couple of questions. So, uh, just on the, uh, I understand the discretion. My my concern is that if you don't, if you have laws and don't enforce them, then people will just keep moving the, the goalposts. So, I think it, it feels a little weird. People are going to occasionally park there, and and the, the police force could choose not to take it, then that'd be okay. But if it's always the case, then maybe we do. We, Want to talk about moving the sign? The question is: Is moving the sign rechanging the ordinances? No. no. Oh, okay. That's why my gut feeling is: since we don't have to read, so exactly as John says, the ordinance reads from 
from Dutch Prairie Road to the bridge. It doesn't doesn't have the, the number of feet that we came up with on our proposal. Um, I understand that he was trying to keep a clear right away for people who in out of a parking lot. I've got very little confidence that that parking lot's ever going to happen. And I would think that, that the, the no parking sign as well as the recreational sign should be moved to the other side, at least to the other side of the entrance to the parking area. And if they decide to put a parking area there, it can be moved back without an ordinance change. Sure. That would be my, my guy. And, and to be honest with you, this was pretty high on my list of things to chat with Pete about while we were hanging signs on Thursday and we just didn't get to it. Sure. I think all of that, again, stated again, I think, and it's really Pete's time and discretion. So sh shall we just leave it? But Chuck, you'll talk to him if there's an opening? Or are we making a recommendation? Are we, yeah, we're ready to make a, how do we, how do we, how do we feel about this? Is it worth putting up for a motion? Are we split on it? What are you thinking? Well, I gotta tell you right now, nobody's paying attention to science because they're still parking down um, West White Hill area on the meadow side. Taking several pictures, someone's been three, three times. I've seen people park there. They've even been parking in the intersection of West White Hill. Um, and nobody's been taking it over. Nobody's, there's no enforcement. So even though I appreciate the signage being perfect, uh, I, I do think I, don't know if it matters. I feel that having something that's always blatantly violated undermines what we're trying to do as a committee. And yeah, I mean, so I would say we should either say it should be kept where it is and enforced or move and make it legal. But I don't think that I, I, I'm uncomfortable saying, yeah, you know, uh, that. We'll, we'll let people make their own decision because that kind of flies in the face of you know, the, the, you see what I'm saying? I, yeah. I am a, I am a sign clicker, so I would like signs to read what they're supposed to do. Right. But I'm just telling you what yeah. I've noticed right, that, right. is that yeah. it's not being adhered to in the other. In the, the other I think that should be. And, and I'm going to partly agree with Diane that I'll believe that People are ignoring that sign and parking there anyways, but I'll, I'll offer that there are other people, good, good people that follow signs that we're not noticing that they drive by. They'd like to park their car there. They see the sign and they go, oh, I wanted to do the three mile stretch into Richmond Village. I guess I can only do the two mile stretch into Richmond. I'll have to go down the road or something. And that I would be more that person that mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah follow the rule. And, yeah. and the problem is that is the, the number one best safest parking area in that area. <clears throat> the pull off into the pull off into what was the parking area. That is in my mind, you can get your car the furthest off the road. You're not in, you're not in, intruding upon the intersection. The only thing that stops you can go there is the sign, which I think is in the wrong place. Uh, uh, personally, I'm fine with Chuck having a conversation with Pete. Ditto. With uh, and, and then if he says no, one could think about it some more. But maybe you just say, yeah, yeah, that'll take one guy two hours. So I'm hearing that they're all in agreement. But Chuck, is one talking? Yes. Oh, I think, I think yes, all I'm all in agreement. Is there any way we could change the words on that signage at the at that bridge there? The, the West White Hill. Do you know what it says? And no parking zone. Any when you park there, at least don't you want to take duct tape and just put a little bit more end? Yeah. I and just want to say no parking. If you can see the up. sign, you're in no parking. And the cars that I've taken pictures of, these wheels are beyond the fog line. They're, so they are in the road. Is, they are place. in the road. Yes. And going up and over and people pulling in and out of the parking area, it's not safe. Yeah. And it's not and it, it is not being enforced and it's not so you, and the sign is so not would you prefer the sign to say no parking? Yeah. yeah. We, well, we're, we're, we're taking out a bunch of no parking signs on those. Can, 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 oh. can uh can you just put you know you can have the end 
I think it says end parking. I can't end, 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 park. end no parking. And then behind it, if you can see the sign, you're in the no parking zone. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I think what you're proposing is yes. that they're taking those other ones down. They'll have a bunch of those signs. Just I don't think that changes anything. Can you ask that? Because right? no. I think that might be just the easiest, yeah, yeah. the coolest thing. Yeah, because you can you can understand people's confusion. I and no parking. You mean coming from this way or coming from this way? Right. You know, I get that. And the clearest thing is just to be no, no parking. parking. And, and because when you pull up there, all you have to do is look up and you go, oh, I'm in a no parking area. And, and that the, was simple. The Thank sign, you. yeah, the sign that we're talking about, the you know, talking to Pete about at the other end. This is does that say begin no parking? I believe that says begin no parking. And I guess that's less ambiguous. Oh, I have a picture on my phone. Yeah. But do you agree that that's less ambiguous wherever it lands up? Yes, begin no yeah, parking. Begin no parking is means something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah. yeah, the other one is red and white yeah. also. Yeah. Do you agree though that that's less ambiguous than end no parking? Because yes. yeah, begin no parking means don't park beyond here. And no parking means from where? What? Right, you came yeah. off the bus. This, this, this is the other one. Yeah, you came off the bus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you came out, of, that's a very good point. You came out from West White Hill, took that left, you would never have seen the begin sign. Seen the begin sign. So come to think of it, if you come, if you took a left up, left spurry road, you, you would, would never, see. you would never see yeah. the so I think, I think changing that. If you weren't opposed to it, um, I why don't I put a stake and ribbon at the other end of the entrance to the old parking area? We can all kind of look at that and go, Yep, that makes sense to me. And at the same time, we can mention the peak that's where we think the no parking sign should be moved to. Well, it, it, unless that we were wrong, that, like, unless. Up until the time the Richmond Land Trust then begins to use this as a drop off, then absolutely. Yeah. Back. Well, the, the, the um, parking ordinance, parking ordinance, is it the traffic ordinance it says 25 feet from Duxbury Road? Correct. So, I mean, to me, a chat or a personal opinion or something? No. Thanks for looking at this right here. Yeah, what is that? Oh, okay. There's yeah. a one on it, and I and I you had half the screen cover, so I couldn't tell if there was somebody trying to get them in here or not. Okay. So, so, so the, the maximal area that would be legal would be the no parking sign would start 25 feet from Duxbury Road. You, right. you could argue if that's the best place for it, but I just as so, far as so what you can't find in the regulations, this is what Pete's. I trust Pete, Pete, where would you put that sign? Because um, I'd say Pete is that 25 feet from the center of the intersection or the edge of the intersection. Yeah. And so where I want to, you know. And the state yeah. statute it's, has two it's, here. It's, it's, one's 30 and one's 50. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so the, you'll talk to him about it. Depending on road size. Moving <laughs> both, both signs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... I will put a flag and I will put a stake in the ground there. Okay. A ribbon on it. We'll say anything on it, but we'll all know what it is. Mm -hmm. And and some places it seemed logical that okay. I signed to. The goal being move the recreational sign so it's not blocking potential parking. And move the parking, no parking sign, so that it allows parking in that one good parking area. Yeah. And I, I don't think, you know, I'm not going to look at it, I'm down there and measure 25 feet. So yeah. I'm going to make sure that it's a place that makes sense. And if it's 40 feet, 50 feet, whatever, we can go that route. I think if we keep it somewhat close to the turnoff for the land trust parking, that if it becomes parking again, moving it back will be will have the least impact. So somewhere. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. There you go. Thanks, John. Yeah, you're exactly. I'm thinking now. Um, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so you're on it. So there's the post right there that they got, they got the sign. There's yeah. this. Yeah. No and sign. That was actually that's fine for this before. Well, then the other question is whether the who put the fence up and whether oh, the sorry. fence should come down. Is it in the way? Um, fence. 
the, the, the those stakes with the rope in between them. Oh, that's a land trust. That's I, a land yes. trust. And I they and they and you cannot move that they really made that exactly telephone call. So I mean I, I in my mind they don't want any money there because people drive in. I'm thinking maybe 10 or 15 feet from that end of that that pull off right now. Uh, towards yeah. Yeah. Which is which is a long ways from 25 feet from the road, but I don't think we're trying to gain. Well, yeah, uh, I'll tell you why that I remember as I recall. There's like this guy wire and there's some other yeah. spurtage in here that there, and there is poison ivy everywhere. Too. Yeah. Okay, not no, to I think yeah. I, I think that there was actually fundamental blockage. So I think you can go about where you were saying. If, if nonetheless, if somebody's going to pull over into that bump out area, I don't want them to get a ticket because that just seems like but, yeah, that's just that, that just sense. seems like that's a great place to. That's the right like, place to park. Right. That's right. Like pulling out your canoe. You want to put it on top of yeah. 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 So I'm not thinking anywhere past that. Yeah. That state just to left your arrow. I'm not thinking. I'm certainly not thinking past that. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not looking to create some giant parking area. I'm just thinking mm -hmm. you've got a safe, good, safe spot. Well, why we? Why do we bet? Yeah. And Pete may come back and say and have a great explanation to say, okay. Thank you for the other end. Yeah, and so the, those ropes were put up by the land trust. Is the yeah. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as, as uh, several people said, you know, they don't want people driving out there because people did. Oh, and well, I'm not concerned about the yeah, log. Yeah. I'm talking about either side of the. Oh, those know, are theirs. Okay. And, and I don't, who knows where the well, property actually, line is. Again, okay. there's might be peaks. Well, again, the, um, the ropes were for. People were driving around the lawn. I yeah. Mean, when they, when yeah. There wasn't a lawn there. There was just a road. They well, were trying to get. Uh, they were trying to stop access to drive in. Right. Well, because right now you can't. But when it gets paved, it will. Yeah. This will just same thing. Okay. Well, oh, where are we are in time. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, well, Chuck, could you just give some thought to those ropes as to whether they would force cars to park on the travel lane? I'm sorry. And so the ropes that we can see, they're not the ones that are keeping people from driving onto the field. Right. But in, in here, because the rope's all the way right. on, on the other side of Duxbury Road, right? That Pete put up. Right. And when, whether any of these ropes are blocking potential parking signs that are legal. And I can't tell from that photograph. So okay. when you drive the state gate, could you give some thought to that? Yeah. And if if they're on town property and they're put up with by people, if there's a potential that they could be moved. Okay. All right. So we are um even with the change of board, we are about 10 minutes over where we want to be, but I don't want to short the circuit. That was um, I think that was really that was helpful. Yes. And just let people know um uh, by people parking again, just watching on the other side of the bridge um and coming across. So far, it's been work. I mean, people have been enjoying the area. The area. Yeah, people are getting very used to it. Fishing. Um, when you talk to Cambridge, I think the idea, you know, I'm sure they've got busy stuff, but just you know, gently remind them that we've changed these ordinances and we're trying to enforce and, you know, pretty good. Because I, I know that's low on the property, but maybe if we just raise it. Because I think we want to, you know, we want to encourage people to. All right. Um, did that was I'm, okay. So uh, we're now about ten minutes over. So seven, twelve, or something like that. Um, so what pond construction update? We kind of hit on that yeah. already yeah. in our previous discussion. I did okay. see the work is just starting. Yeah, there, there was a, yeah. A, yeah. a nice thing that got clear. The lower the water by two feet. Mm -hmm. Um, apologize, uh, Brad sent out a note apologizing for the mess. Somebody who lives down the stream from the water. Anything else to, to bring up on that? And I, I wanted to, I think the answer to this, I asked this before. Uh, at one point, somebody had suggested using fill from the construction. Um, potentially on the other side, the answer was no. Um, if, if you ever do anything on the other side, that would be fresh materials. Okay. All right. So, can we move on to item old item six? We're back on schedule. Browns Court Select Board update. 
I, I'm not sure that they've got to back this like board again. Uh, they've got a very nice graphic sign up there now. They've staked out all the parking area. They've staked out the ball fields. Um, so it's just like, like you see that they're going to with their plans of the select board here. That's it. Yes. And then and I thought, so no, they, no. they may even be presenting right now. Mm -hmm. Originally, I thought that they would have presented before. Okay. So just just to keep us in a loop as to where our thoughts were going, and we were all pretty good with what they suggested. Right? We yeah. we well, officially uh, we officially approved. Yeah. yeah in the middle. Very well. Done. Yeah. All right. So we're back on schedule. Seven fifteen. Discuss future direction goals on PAC. It seems. I guess the thought is. It, it, Talked a lot about what we want to do and how we want to grow and or do we want to go away, you know. And it, it's it's it seems like we have the same we we hash for the groundhog day here as far as conversations that we're having. Um I don't know whether we want to be more aggressive in parking areas or we want to go into maintenance mode and maintain kind of what we do or or do we want to hop over onto somebody else's? I did notice the recreational, recreational um, select board list of um, they wanted to change their mission statement or something like that. So, or, or we go to another, we add it into another marriage. The one thing I would right. say for the seasonal aspects of these, we have several seasonal things. We have the seasonal demands on road. Huntington River near East Peckham Road, both you know, both ends of it, the the well, the New Street of Huntington and the Upper Huntington Dickens Bowl. Um, and uh, uh, the <clears throat> Checkered House parking, and then winter, I, uh, Westwell Hill. I, the one thing that we can do that's useful is to get good data from this year. So I don't know exactly what that means, but you know, nobody else would be paying attention to what worked and what didn't as closely as we might. I don't necessarily mean we have to meet all the time. But do you know what I'm saying? Is that if we're gonna make sort of data or observation driven, you know, please, we need to be paying close attention. And things like counts and ticket counts and things like that are important to have because nobody else is gonna. But, you know, be pulling that together to see if anything needs to change. So I think that is a mission, kind of the watching, waiting, waiting and watching. And John, you might oh, minimize that. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyone else have any thoughts on this topic? How do we go about, and again, you folks have the history, I know, but I think Tark's comment is appropriate in that it, it, your groundhog okay, that comment. Um, uh, there's, um, I mean, one of the great things that has happened in the last year is the Dubway situation and all the change in signage and all that. Um, should we be, you know, how do we go about seeing if there is a need somewhere else in the town for something like that? Or is the understanding that someone will come to us if they feel like there's a need? Because right now we're kind of limited to, you know, the double road won't even be much of a topic uh, once the signs are, are, are up. Um, we've given the Brownsport people approval. Um, we're going to look into the changing of the zoning on this or, or questions with us. Yeah, questions regarding the elements. So I'm just wondering, how do we actively go about figuring out? Have we talked to the trails committee in the past? Mm -hmm. So we had, I remember we had talked to them on the topic of the rockers, and then the floods kind of put us off of that. Were we 
Do we talk to groups and identify? Do we look at, as, as John says, we look at data and try to figure out where are people getting the most tickets and where do we lack parking? Uh, and do we feel like we're addressing the when there's five major parking areas in town that we deal with, and that's what we and that's our our lot in life? Or what what do we do? My personal thought. Um, Um, I, I love your grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is like, um, I think our value added is 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 really good to have a group of us looking at these types of things. Um, most of our issues, hinge points, come up with the Richmond land trust parking areas. We only have jurisdiction over a few things over Rocker is great. Johnny there the Chickered Chicken House Bridge Arcane is great. Um and because we're part of the town we can only deal with that it's really liaisons may I say for the Richmond Land Trust to our land trust. Um well, well, does it make sense to ask the select board? Well, this is a great question for Josh, actually. Whether they feel as if uh, maybe not disbandment or anything, but maybe kind of uh, moving to a meet every six weeks or two months until maybe a more pressing issue comes up and then ramp it up again. I just feel. Honestly, this should fall in the trails. Excuse me. Yeah, I feel like this needs to fall within the trails or the recreation. Or recreation. But the trails, the use the, the trails really besides that besides um, that way, the trails really move this action. Keep it on the trails, get into the river or biking. And where can those Yes, people. That's what it comes into for me. And the original interest, I feel, is is very has gotten very responsive for their land opening up. And they're still working in a new access area. I don't like I don't like bureaucracy, so I don't want to become part of the bureaucracy things. <laughs> Um, so, so who do we ask these questions? Oh, Josh. Okay. I really feel like I, I may I say I feel that because we're we're nimble and can get things done and want some people that things get done quicker than other things can get them done. Um, but I really feel like recreation or how much recreation you want in town is really a ton of action. Uh, so I feel like if, uh, that um, would we, can we ask if we infiltrate with them or if we merge with them, would, our, would we be able to help them change their approach? You know, is there some magic that could be spilled over? Of pragmatism because not not because of us as individuals, but because we've been looking at this problem. I, I think that like the trails, I, I could guess that they probably see things differently than we do. Yeah. You know, they go, we really want to get up into this area, and how can we get parking there? I think they in the town forest for one night. And then the BYCC, you know, because they have trails that go up and over there and so, so an idea would be to not just invite Josh to a meeting, but actually coordinate mm -hmm. when the next meeting is for a time that he can be with us. Yeah. So, so and we can ask him this existential question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Know, and we really need to ask slightly, but Josh, well, he leaves. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I do think you know what you just said was really 
great is that the recreation and trails folks are all thinking about parking as access. They're really not thinking about parking as impact. And we could give them, I mean, you can't think of one without the other. And so maybe that's a better way. The voice, well, not voice is different kind of time that by controlling the parking, you control the use, you control the overuse. You know, nobody ever goes and does a study and says, how many people can these trails accommodate without causing permanent damage to the trails? How many people can go to Huntington River before it's overused? I mean, we've seen, we've seen the Winooski River, the banks there are all defoliated because it would appear to be reused. Everybody's launching kind of everywhere back and forth. Uh, I think we have our choices are we do what we do. We get absorbed by people more directly involved in each one of their areas, you know, or we or we step up our game and and and, and we go big and we do planned parking areas and we do or you know, if we actually cost like four or two dollars and we actually you know, get plan is done of what Johnny Brook, we want Johnny Brook to look like. You know, get plan is done instead mm -hmm. as to how we would suggest the Dillon's Pond issue could be could be taken care of. You know. I remember uh, early, I thought maybe a few years ago, thinking about, you know, make it, there's a, a lot made of the town plan, you know, what the town's intentions are. We never really had a town recreation plan. I don't think it's us to do, but parking overuse. You know, you, you're right. You, this is one of the leaders. And so maybe, I mean, that's a lot to, I don't know who would take it on, but maybe that's the context that we sort of diffuse into other organizations. Well, there's always been a kind of goal that you know, the volunteer green and the round church are hands off for us. You know, you're the parking committee, but not the, not the big part. Not the, not the commercial. Yeah. Recreation. Yeah, we but I mean, well, so certainly we, that's all recreation. Right. So, um, just history wise, we were involved with the Round Church early on. Actually, the, the, the time of parking, you know, um, Paris worked with oh, yeah. them also. And they were really worked, oh, yes. Cards. Cards are saying where are other parkings. We had that located okay, there. And um, the issue they were having with their Round Church parking down below, just didn't have the right side edge that said, so this is for round church beds only. You need to please call us or so we were involved just a little bit. Um, That's one of the areas I wonder about. So, you know, I see a dog dog, Cochran, I see a lot of mountain bikers, and it, and it seemed like Cochran's is saying, okay, you could park here. They are very good. Hopefully, they never stop saying you can park here. No, but, but we talked about it early on. Yeah. And uh, talked with um, the conference, I can't remember his first name. And he's like, yeah, parking's over there. This yeah. is part of your town. Parking's always over here. And I, I, I kind of wanted it. Kind of, I wish sometimes that people were parking in the church would park there. I like, see 10 cars with bike racks on them, and they'll say, oh, it'd be nice if. Your grandparents should go around church and you know put around there, and you've got great parking if you know about it. Very conference. The compromise was the two hours, I guess. That's what it was. Yeah, because it wasn't. Yeah, so there two hours gets watched. Kind of going back to getting Josh here, so we'll schedule around his availability. Maybe some homework would be outlining you know, two or three potential features for this group. Rather than, and I don't think we'll get uh, particularly helpful. We'll get a pat on the back if we say, you know, should we disband and don't tell us how important you are. I mean, I think he wrote, but I think if we said, here are three pragmatic and continuous, we are, we do this, or we do that, to have three different options or three different options or something that we can present to him for his view and also, you know, for his suggestions on how we keep this up to us. Does that make sense? So we come into that conversation with yeah. some uh let me know what's up. Yeah, but but not an open-ended question. I mean, well, we certainly be open to his other ideas, but I think it's always better to have 
a couple of proposals to get people thinking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so where did this go? I think that the, the, the how do we do this to get ready for it? So you're gonna, we're gonna <clears throat> find when Josh leaves. I think we'll invite him to the next meeting. Yeah, and our, and we'll we schedule that. Yeah, and then uh, who who would do those? How, how do we work out those? We can we can just without just without. okay in written off okay because I, I feel like we all know. What the possibility? Yeah, to yeah. yeah. Okay. I look a year down the road, and I think. Then what? Get the valuable stuff going. Good job. We get it. Well, that's ongoing. And then there is always going to be minor maintenance issues. Maybe minor maintenance issues. Or you might need to add how can we pull together for those? Well, unless we, unless we say, boom. This is what we want to do. Exactly. I'm not sure the boom is soft. <laughs> you don't get a lot of boom here. <laughs> well, I think the boom, it's not just us. I think it has to do with planned capacity for recreation, which is definitely not a parking issue, but that's what we're fighting. If we had strong, if the, the town had a strong intention of what they wanted to allow in parking, then, then we could figure out how to make parking for it. If right now we're just trying to go from fire to fire. What? So that's the boom to me. What do you think of us? What? Just curious, what do we think is the most underserved recreational aspect of parking? I mean, that's not, not this is just something maybe to ponder. You know, is it is it is it watercraft? Is it swimming? Is it cycling? Is it running? Is it where can we step up? You know, it's an interesting. Sorry, I'm talking to them. In the um, one thing that's interesting is that we don't say, you know, like for the parking places that are like near West White Hill and California, we don't say these are for river use only. So people might be using it for parking lot or bicycle or running. And sometimes that. I mean, if you're running, maybe it matters a lot. If you're biking, maybe not so much, and you can move them. But would we want to? I don't think. I think that's a hard thing to do to say. Well, the only people who do X, but even if we could suggest that, that maybe that's part of the problem is that we've got people who are blocking usage that don't need to. I don't know how we would. Well, pro probably swimming is going to be always underserved, but yeah. we just can't do anything more about it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although you've got a big point going. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that's uh, truly underserved is um, access for those with limited mobility. And I really yeah. applaud no Richmond Act, but still, they're looking into that. However, however, we can get them on the Longtail Bridge or the people who. He would want to sit by the river, see the river, but they're keeping it around now. We can't get there. I like that. We couldn't do it totally on our own, but we could accommodate the parking piece of it. Oh, the the trails the people could accommodate yeah. the mm -hmm. accessibility piece of it. Right. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. good for, for me, what's left unresolved and, and may take care of itself, but there are five parking spaces for Bombardier Meadow. And the Jonesville access to the river. Um, I guess there's the railroad parking, but that's private property. Um, so that that's something that at the moment is unresolved. When we open it up back next year, I don't know. So again, those those five against this land trust, it's it's yeah. Are we doing a little agenda? So we are right at 7.35, which would be approved for this by 14 minutes. Um, I'm guessing that this conversation about 
direction will be much better after we talk to Josh. Yes. They, and 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 we, all agree, yeah. we all agree that we don't, uh, I think we don't need to over for that. You know, hard, hard. All right. And open our hard I'm good with that. Okay. It's a good discussion, y'all. All right. So we are at 735, which is exactly where we need to be. And that is approval of the 514 meeting minutes. And there was something in there that troubled us. What was it? What was it, it was the, uh, was it the parking spaces right. until August when Johnny broke the clock? And, and, the things. and the spelling of my name. Oh, oh that, I'm, I'm sorry. Also, what did I do? You put in L. Oh, uh, okay. there was also a mention of frost lines instead of fog lines. Gotcha. I'm guessing. And that's, but wasn't there something about the railroad runway and what we were going to not do or do? We were, we we're just letting that be the latest. No, what I meant is, in did, you, did you read them? I did, but not don't have in front of me. Okay, so I will correct Ron's you know, name. Do we have the meeting minutes? There was something. There was something. Mm -hmm. Let me pull that out. Right, you should write it out. What line did I? A oh, rank one. Yes, I should not have done it. There's, there's more than one. Oh, I, oh, I know what happened. When I first typed this, I typed John Franklin, realized that's wrong. So I went through and changed the F's to R's. So I apologize. I do know that. You're going to have to mess up a whole lot more than that to get fired. Nice try, my thinking. That was my thinking. Okay. I guess, this is, I, I, I guess I, I would draw one concern. It was that we talked about the filing fee and everything. And I think John mentioned that they were getting it for free now. So we aren't going to further that. That's not something you want to necessarily bring up to Josh. Okay. I guess that was it. Okay. And I, have... and I am uh, I am monitoring the, the account and that's the that many okay. and, and it was the last I knew I was the one that was going to invite Josh. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I made the changes. So I move that we approve the 514-24 meet minutes. I second. Aye. 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 So we are at 736. Uh, we're the uh, uh, old number nine is confirmed that the next pack meeting was on 624. I think that's been superseded by figuring out when Josh is available. Is that correct? Uh, I think we should have a pack meeting with them. Okay, so we should propose to Josh 6.4. Okay. Well, 6.4 doesn't work for us. Oh. <laughs> so we're out of time. <laughs> but uh, potentially phone in if you want virtually off. We're not going to be here the center. Well, it seems to me, given the our discussion of the last 20 minutes, we really need to talk to Josh. Okay. So, um, what about talking to him first and then give him two or three dates to choose from? Does that work? So that we, I think we're scheduled for the 24th and then the next one would be the 8th. Right? We have a, we have a correct I'm sorry. Yes. We can, so right now we can wait until I think. That works for me. We can virtually do 624, John. Do you want to do virtually? So we might be in the center. We are. So we might. Yeah. But I don't two hours early. Remind me why it's not the 17th. It's the third. The next two weeks from now is the 17th. Is it? Oh. Is it? Is it because we're off by a week already? No. Or? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Is, does Duncan have a schedule for this, the 24th? Let's look him up. Are you calling me on the 17th, sir? It'd be great to have Josh. It'd be great to have John and Diane in person Thank when we meet with Josh. We are scheduled for the 24th, I see. You see it three on weeks from today. Right. Yes. Right. Are we scheduled for the 17th? No, we're scheduled for the 24th. That's right, Bob. Yeah, okay. Three weeks from today. The problem we're not we can't do the seventeenth would be that Josh is needed at the water and sewer in the select board. Oh. Oh. 
Gotcha. Which are yeah. seven tapes. Uh, all right. Needed a different time. They are from six to seven, the water and sewer. So conceivably, seven, if we had started before six, um, he would be able to come. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. It's so it's that, that, water and sewer and select board are in the same room, so the space is available here. So we want to see if John wants to. I'm not sure how much time he wants yeah. to be away from either of those days. Four, four, four hours of meeting. I'd, I'd like to have his full attention. Where do we choose? I said yeah. it was <laughs> How do we think about the same tapes? <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, June 18th. Four ones in your night. Is that I uh the 18th? Yes, for us, not the night. Same with me. I can do the 18th. So should we how are you on the I can, 18th? I can do the 18th. I can I can move things on the 18th, so everybody else can do it. So do we want to give Josh, do you want to meet with us, Josh, on the 17th, an hour before your other meetings? Or would you like to meet on the 18th? At 6. 17th at 5 or 18th at 6. How does that, how's that sound to everybody? It's Monday the 17th at 5 o'clock. John, fortunately, and before the 18th at 6 o'clock. Well, here's, here's a question for you. Is this is me with Josh the entire agenda? In which case do we meet in executive session? Meaning we have no problem, problem. like there's no distraction. We have one we have a one hour meeting with Josh and, and that we doesn't have, really never done executive. I haven't taken the training. What what don't you need a, a do you need a reason to do an executive session? I'm just trying to think. Well, I, I think. What I'm trying to do is we're trying to keep focused on what we're doing. So we can we can do it, but I'm not. I think we just have one agenda. That's Josh. Josh and I'll keep those two items that we have, yeah. For two hours? No. no. Yeah. He no. really wants us. I wouldn't even make him stay now. We need some yeah. time for Josh. But we we could just have to go on now and he could need to stay in half hour. Yeah. Yeah. So what were the two items? Our our existence. <laughs> and and the, the zoning rules that right. talk about right. screening and right. 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 that might take a buildings. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, 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 what, 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 what we can do with that, and then you won't know the answer, but you can tell us where to go. What can we do with that? I like, oh, I like that. What can we so do set it for an hour, and we'll give him the option of the 17th at five or the 18th. So, and with the the zoning question, we're really not looking for him to give us an answer. We're looking for him to give us direction. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that shouldn't be a long conversation. Yeah. That should be a, yep, yeah, there, there. Okay. So are we just doing an hour? Unless there's other business. Let's so go. we have to have to warn it for two hours and then we can close it earlier? Or no, yes. Do that? No. Yes. Okay. So we can talk about the contracting and, and Johnny wrote about all this, but we're not changing anything. You know what I'm saying? If we're not voting on it, no. that's going to happen whether, whether we ever talk about it or not. Right. So, so that, it would just be an update if we wanted an update. Yeah, and if we want it, so if we're doing that for an hour. Yeah, I think I, I hear what you're saying, Chuck. I don't think there's anything else we need to. I mean, do we still want to be on the 24th and you guys are at the virtual or you want to? That's true. Is there, is there a need? Right. That would be three meetings in June. Which I think is unnecessary until we talk to Josh. And I think that's something that's get clear about. I don't think we have any burning bushes or anything we need to put out right now. There's no fires. So I um, agree. Unless agree. something comes up, yeah. and we'll just keep, yeah. keep on, on keeping on. All right. We have homework. So yes. Okay. And we should go homework. Talking with Pete, you know, some sign stuff. I'm sending a note to David. Saying you always have we, we should all uh, keep our eye out on compliance and stuff like that. Just sort of observe. Mine's. Just like how how far can go. 
Oh, I will yeah, it'll be, yeah. Chuck and I will have a ringside seat to help things are going on the Yeah. And it's yeah. already yeah. swimming. Yeah. People were swimming yeah. yesterday and today. Yeah. Why would more ask you? Well, I'm busy with road today. Let me ask you. Third day, I'm back in the woods. I don't see the road, you know, unless I hear it. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Somebody, somebody had a boom. Call. So, uh, so at seven forty-five, we're at seven forty-five, and items for next meeting agenda. I think we just had that discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, there's anything, anything else on the agenda? Well, I will send out. I will look for advice on how to, how to word our conversation with Josh. So, feel free to jump in and, and, okay. and okay. put a board or whatever, and, and put something. Grow, grow it from there. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I move we adjourn. Yeah. A second. All right. It is at seven forty-five on June third. We are ending the meeting.